part of the firing for Cheeks is because Hollins is available. So Stephen A. Smith, I'll, th I'll start with you first. What do you make of the firing? I think it was bogus. <clears throat> oh. I think it was premature. I think it was credibly unfair to Mo Cheeks. I'm disgusted by it. The fact is you're 49, 50 games into his first season as head coach of the Detroit Pistons, and he's gone. Make no mistake about it. This is not the decision of Joe Dumas. Joe Dumas did not make this call. This is the owner, Tom Gores, a man that's worth a couple of billion dollars, who's barely, who's barely been to about five games this year, uh, who, who ultimately decides to fire Mo Cheeks because that's not the man he wanted to begin with. I would remind everybody, because a lot of people out there don't realize this, it wasn't Joe Dumas that wanted Lawrence Frank. It was Mr. Gores. Uh, and now you have a guy who's the owner, who's worth billions, who's also graduated from Michigan State and would love to get Tom Izzo. So don't be surprised if you hear Tom Izzo's name, the coach at Michigan State for the job. Now, if I had a son, I would want him to play for Tom Izzo. I love Tom Izzo as a coach. I think he's fantastic. But I think you'll see uh, the Pistons coming after him. I think you'll see Flip Saunders in Minnesota eventually coming after him as well. Our former colleague here at ESPN. But in the end, what it comes down to is that Joe Dumas, I'm going to say this because I don't think a lot of people realize this. I think he's getting a bad rap. You have to, and, and, and just so everybody knows, I have not spoken to Joe Dumas. I'm just going by what I see and how I feel. Went to seven consecutive Eastern Conference Finals over the course of uh, 2002 to 2009. Everybody wants to make a big deal about the number of coaches, Skip, that they've had. The number is eight and counting since 2000. Well, I got news for you. When Rick Carlisle was there, it was former owner Bill Davison that wanted him gone because he didn't like how Bill, uh, Rick Carlisle related uh, to people that worked under him within the organization. When Larry Brown was there, it was Bill Davison who wanted him gone. And Joe D didn't hire Lawrence Frank. And, and, you know, that was the owner. And Joe D, you know, was picking Mo Cheeks, and now you make this decision. So there's a plethora of coaches that have fallen under the stewardship of Joe Dumas, whether they were hired and unable to be retained or whatever the case may be. And it's moves by ownership. And that's what this is here. Mr. Gores did not want Maurice Cheeks to begin with. He was just willing to tolerate Cheeks hiring because he know he messed up by having Dumas hire Lawrence Frank, and that's what you have right now. It's an unfortunate situation, uh, but it is what it is. Um, and in the end, Mo Cheeks is the one that gets a raw deal because bottom line is this man did not deserve to lose his job just 50 games into his first season. It's an insult, and it's egregious, and it's a damn sad day that it happened. I agree, which is why there's only one way any of this makes any sense, and that's if tomorrow Lionel Hollins is the new head coach of the Detroit Pistons, and you know and I know that doesn't appear to be happening. Even though Lionel appeared, uh, it sounds like he wants the job. He is available. I was shocked that Memphis let him go after last year, after they got to the conference finals. Obviously, they had philosophical differences, he and the new regime. But Stephen A., if you made me choose between Mo Cheeks and Lionel, I think I would opt for Lionel. But that's not what's happening here. I think you're right. I think Tom Gores, who lives and works in Beverly Hills, is angling for his college coach at Michigan State. And it, it, it sounds like John Lawyer, that, that assistant coach, is just going to have to ride it out for the rest of the year. So I don't understand even the timing of this firing. They had just won four out of six. They had just blown out Brooklyn, who was on a back-to-back. -back and Denver, who lost Ty Law in the second half. But they blew him out at home, so I was seeing some signs of, oh, maybe they're starting to figure it out. Obviously, two huge off-season acquisitions, Josh Smith, Brandon Jennings by a trade. But it, it hasn't clicked for Mo Cheeks, but it hasn't not clicked. Like, it's too soon. They're, uh, uh, that's sad but true. They're a half game out of the playoffs. I mean, that's ridiculous in the East, but that's the truth. So... I, I don't get it unless it's Lionel Hollins, and I think you're hearing, as I'm hearing, it is not Lionel Hollins. Mm. Exactly. That's exactly correct.